Hey, what's going on guys, it's Anson. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to update the prefix on the backend. So in the last video, I showed you guys how to create this form and pretty much we haven't done anything with it other than just having it rendered to our component, to our page. We haven't uh, made it so that it will actually update it from the front to the backend. Right now we're gonna implement the backend. Okay, so we're gonna go inside our express application and we're going to set up a route, the endpoint that the client is going to call to update the actual prefix, okay? So for this endpoint, we're going to go inside the discord.js file. So this is the discord router. And we're going to set up a put request. So put requests are another request method that are typically used by convention for updating values. So this would be very perfect for using it. So the route for this router is going to simply be slash guilds slash guild ID. And then we're gonna do prefix. Okay, so over here, this uh, part over here, this is called the route parameter, the colon guild ID, this is the route parameter. So this is going to be dynamic because we wanna make sure that uh, we're able to handle multiple different guilds that are being uh, updated, their configuration, okay? And then slash prefix will just uh, distinguish uh, the type of update we're making. So prefix, it can be either be a, a mod log or welcome channel etc so one thing that i'm also going to do is i'm also going to set up the uh, request handler so the callback function okay okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just first let's get the actual request body parameter so we know that whenever the user is going to make a request to this endpoint okay so slash guilds guild id prefix they're going to pass in a request body and in the request body there needs to be a prefix variable okay so let's go ahead and do that let's destructure prefix so to get it from the actual request body we reference rec for request dot body okay so you're actually going to notice something's going to happen when i run this so pay attention to the console log so right over here and i'm going to open up postman so right now i'm going to call http localhost 3001 slash api slash discord okay so notice how we're in the router and the base uh, endpoint for this router is discord and then the overall base route for everything is slash api so slash api slash discords slash guilds so we're going to pass in just a random id prefix and we need to make sure we pass in a put request and then for request body we will do url encoded so let's just do prefix exclamation mark so your encoded is basically the format whenever you make the actual HTTP request from the front end okay so if I actually look at the console you're gonna notice that an error happened okay and it's gonna go ahead and say that rec.body is undefined so why is that the case well so by default whenever you make requests to whenever you make post requests or put requests or specify a request body the request body is going to be empty like the actual uh, request body object is going to be undefined Okay, so by default, Express doesn't uh, parse any of these things at all. You need to actually opt into a middleware. So we're gonna go into our app.js file and right up top over here, I'm going to reference app, okay, our Express app, and I'm gonna call use, and I'm gonna go ahead and reference the Express module. So Express comes with the .json function, which will parse all JSON objects that are sent, and it'll parse it into the request body object as an object. So now watch this. If I go ahead and if I click send, well, you're going to notice it still is undefined. But let me actually pass in a raw request, but I'm going to pass it as JSON. So prefix. Okay, and let's send that. You're going to see that we actually have the value. Okay, but if I send, let's say for example, if I send text or raw, it will say undefined. If I send a URL encoded, it'll also say undefined. So for you, so for URL encoded, we're going to opt in to express URL encoding, and we're going to set the extended property to false. So extended pretty much determines whether or not objects can be passed in as the payload or in the uh, the URL parameter. We'll just set it to false for now. So if I send URL encoded, we have the actual data so what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and just check to see if the prefix 
is truthy or not. So if it's not truthy, we will return res.send or we'll do res.status 400 prefix required. Okay, so now watch this. I'm not going to send the prefix and it's going to give us a 400 bad request. And it says prefix required. So if that's not the case, if they actually did pass it, well, first let's actually destructure the guild ID property from rec.params. So that's how we reference our route parameters. Okay, rec.params is going to give us this route parameter value, which it's going to be dynamic every single time, which is going to allow us to uh, change different guilds. So what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if we're going to do, do two things. We're going to search a database and we're going to update. So we need to actually import guild config schema from database schemas guild config. And then we're going to await oh, this guild config dot find one and update because this returns a promise. So the first parameter is going to be the condition. So we want to search the guild ID. So instead of doing guild ID, guild ID, because I know in the database schema, the actual guild ID is named guild ID like that. But since these parameters are the same, I can just leave it like this. Okay, so the second parameter is going to be the actual update query. In this case, we're going to update the prefix only. And we'll do the same thing because prefix is also a new prefix just like that. And one more parameter I'm going to pass in is in the object, which takes in the new property. And I'm going to set this to true. This is going to return the new updated document if, if it was found, that is, and if it was updated successfully. So now this will return truthy if the document was found. Okay, so if update, then we shall just return update. Actually, I'll just do this. I'll do this. Return update. Does dot send update. Or so I'm using a ternary operator. So basically what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if update is truthy. So if it's truthy, then it's going to execute this. If it's falsy, it's going to execute the next part. So it's going to be res.status 400 send could not find document, something like that. And we should also uh, try catch as well, but I'll worry about that later. Uh, so now let's go ahead and let's send. You're going to see that uh, what's going on over here. Oh. Okay, so it's going to say, could not find document. Okay, cool. That means that if we try to send a request with a wrong guild ID that's not in the database, then it's not going to update. But let me actually get the value from the database now. So this is one of my guilds that's in the database. And if I actually just pass this in, and if I update, you're going to see that it actually got updated. Okay, if I change this to question mark, it's going to be changed to question mark. If I change it to dollar sign, or if, I, if I refresh, dollar sign right over there. Okay, hopefully you guys can uh, see that. And yeah, that's pretty much how we update data on the back end. Okay, so in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to connect both the front end and the back end. Okay, so hopefully this video made sense and I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.